we all miss the huge detail about the location of Laugh Tale and we have to discuss it. You may remember that not too long ago, I discussed the great importance of Tequila Wolf. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then go watch that video because only a few weeks after I released that video, we got in-series confirmation of that massive role that Tequila Wolf is going to play in the series. And now I won't go into great detail, but the basic premise was that Tequila Wolf is very important in light of major reveals that we've had in the Egghead Island arc, namely Vegapunk's announcement that the One Piece world is sinking. In a situation where water levels are rising, having a bridge that stands hundreds of meters above the sea level, that bridge is going to come to a big relief to many people. And well, why is this relevant? Well, I guess you could say that I've really been thinking more and more about the sinking world lately. And I came to a realization recently that this, this news about the world sinking, about the water levels rising, that also has to have a bearing on the location of the One Piece. And if you see where I'm going with this, then you should subscribe because you and I are obviously like-minded people and we should continue discussing One Piece. And if you don't know where I'm going with this, then you should subscribe to the channel too. That way you can listen to me more and more, meaning that you and I will eventually share the same wavelength. By now, most of us should be familiar with the fact that the four road poneglyphs, they reveal the location of Laugh Tale, the island that houses the great treasure, the One Piece. Each of the four road poneglyphs specifies one location, and Laugh Tale will be at the epicenter of those four locations. This was all told to us back at Zo, and by now this should all be pretty clear. But since the Egghead Island arc, and since the reveals that we've received from Vegapunk about the state of the world, about the history of the world, well, I think this all completely changes how we've been thinking about Laugh Tale and the location of the One Piece up to this point. In chapter 1115, it was revealed that the world sunk during the Void Century, theorized by Vegapunk to be the result of the use of ancient weapons that drastically changed the natural environment, causing water levels to rise by a whopping 200 meters and doing so in a relatively short period of time. This essentially means that the world that existed during the Void Century no longer exists today, because the majority of that former civilization has now sunk underwater. In the previous ancient world, Vegapunk believes there were many more continents in existence, whereas those continents have now become lost to us. All the islands that exist today are new islands that were all part of one continent. And what this means is that it would most likely mean that the treasure left behind by Joy Boy and the island on which it was left, the island that would later be named Laugh Tale, well, that island and that treasure shouldn't be on the world's surface anymore. Logically speaking, that island would have most likely sunk along with the rest of the world. But note, the key words in that sentence were most likely because there are some things we have to work out. So let's unpack this together. Statistically speaking, if only locations within one continent that were at least 200 meters tall were able to survive this great crisis, that means that a huge majority of the entire world sunk. Which is why I said logically, statistically, mathematically. The likelihood of the location where the One Piece was stored surviving, that's pretty small. But I do have to say that the chances of Laugh Tale surviving this great ecological disaster does somewhat increase when you start to consider some other external factors. Which is is why I did say most likely. For example, it's unlikely that Joy Boy would have just chosen any location at random. He would have most likely wanted to ensure the safety of the One Piece and therefore he would have chosen a location that he knew wouldn't get lost underwater. You could also assume that as the world's first pirate, Joy Boy most likely had better knowledge than anyone else about the different locations in the world, about the extremely high spots that would be a perfect candidate, the perfect location to store the One Piece. But then I would still have to wonder, how did he have the confidence, the confidence and the self-assurance to not worry that it will eventually sink along with the rest of the world? Was it because of his ancient kingdom technology? Was he able to calculate how much the water levels were rising by and then only did he afterwards go find a place where he could say, ah, that location will still be safe? Did he purposely choose a location that he knew to be at least 200 meters tall 
because he knew he was able to calculate that the water would only rise by 200 meters. But I think also relevant to this discussion is the question of when exactly did the world start to sink? Or more accurately, when did the world finish sinking? Because it's important for us to know exactly when the water rose by 200 meters for us to better ascertain the location of Love Tale. For example, if the water levels only started rising at the end of the void century, or even if the water levels didn't finish rising by the end of the void century, then that would actually increase the chances of Love Tale being located underwater. That's because Love Tale would have continued to get submerged as water levels rose, finding itself getting more and more submerged undersea after the void century after Joy Boy left the One Piece there. So let's actually take a look at Vegapunk's words. Here, Vegapunk seems to suggest that the world started sinking during the void century and that by the end of the hundred year void, the water levels had already risen by 200 meters. So then the most straightforward or the most obvious assumption would be that Joy Boy would have likely waited until the end or at least until towards the end of the void century. He would have waited until the water levels finished rising before planting the One Piece at Love Tale. In which case, that would actually pretty much make our discussion so far pretty pointless, would make our question pretty pointless, because there's no real great complication in that case. The water levels had already finished rising by the point Joy Boy went to hide the One Piece, meaning that the One Piece is somewhere out there on one of the islands that survived the Void Century. We don't have to strain ourselves trying to figure out whether Love Tale is located underwater or not. But I promise I have haven't wasted your time, because I do think it's a little more complex than that. It's not so simple as Joy Boy just waiting until the water stopped rising and then going to set up the world's greatest treasure hunt. We have to consider what sort of a chaotic period this would have been. Vegapunk suggests that it was Joy Boy's death, or at least it was his defeat, that marked the end of the Void Century. It was only then that the 20 kingdoms would go on to form the world government, this involving the colonization of the Red Line, so that that they could escape the increasingly inhospitable, uninhabitable islands of the Blue Sea. We also know that Nefertari D. Lily defected at the last minute to scatter the Polnoglyphs across the world while the rest of the 19 monarchs were making their way to Marie Joie. So this strongly implies that Lily spread the Polnoglyphs after Joy Boy's defeat. Her actions seem to have been part of a contingency plan in the event that Joy Boy and his allies lose the war. And because the Poneglyphs, or at least the Lord Poneglyphs, put together, contains the information about Love Tale's location, that means those Poneglyphs would have had to have been created after the One Piece was already hidden at Love Tale. You can imagine that the Lord Poneglyphs would have only been created after the One Piece was already secured on a location, because Joy Boy and his allies would want to make sure that the information they leave on those poneglyphs is correct. And when you consider how long it would take to construct those four large poneglyphs, coordinate them to make sure that they actually point to the right location, you would think that that should take some time. And now obviously I'm not suggesting that they would have had to carve the stones from scratch, but even carving in the hieroglyphics or whatever language script, those are big stones. When we saw Odin carve in something for Roger, even that looked like they were way for some time. Imagine having to do that for four large poneglyphs. Basically, this is my long-winded way of saying that there is still a chance that Love Tale is located underwater if the One Piece was left at a location before the water levels stopped rising because it seems like all of these events were sort of happening at the same time. Unless, of course, we go back to the idea that Joy Boy actually pre-calculated how much the sea would rise by, therefore choosing a location he knew to be safe. But I don't know, for me, personally, that just feels too risky. Given how important the One Piece is, more than just being a treasure, but the fact that the One Piece seems to concern the fate of the future of the world, would Joy Boy really risk leaving it at a location that could be potentially lost forever even if he felt that he had done the maths right? Was he really that self-assured? Could you really be that confident? Especially when it seems like the world government currently controls Uranus, thereby potentially suggesting that 
that they have always controlled Uranus. Or even if it's not Uranus exactly, it seems like the Great War involved both parties firing ancient weapons, meaning that the world government or the 20 kingdoms back then did control some sort of ancient weapon. How could Joy Boy be sure that the world government or the 20 kingdoms wouldn't continue using their ancient weapon? Even if the war was over, they might still continue using the weapon to just quell any sort of revolution, quell any sort of dissent, and therefore the water levels would continue rising even above the calculation that Joy Boy had already made. Otherwise, the alternative would be that Joy Boy would have had to choose a location that was just much, much, much higher than any other point in the world. A location where he could be super confident that it wouldn't sink. In which case, how many places like that exist in the world? Surely a location like that would stick out. And that would mean that it's pretty easy for people to find. Whether that be pirates going after the treasure or the world government trying to rid the world of the One Piece and of all the world's secrets once and for all. Especially when we take into consideration that only one continent survived. How many places on just one continent would fit that criteria without also raising the suspicions of the world government. I mean, surely, if it's one of the relatively few locations that did manage to survive the Void Century, that wouldn't be so hard for the world government to locate. I get that it is still a very expansive world, we still have a lot of islands, but the world government has had 700 years to try locate this thing. For me, that all just sounds too risky. But then speaking of risky business, I just want to take a sidebar for a moment here, because I have another question question that I don't think we're asking enough. Given how all the Poneglyphs so far, or at least the large majority, they all seem to have been entrusted to Joy Boys, close friends and allies. Does this mean that similarly, there are people or there are creatures, there are allies of Joy Boy who are guarding the One Piece? Is this something that the Roger Pirates had to deal with? Upon reaching Laugh Tale, did they have to convince the guardians of the One Piece that, hey, we're good guys and we should be given access to this treasure? Because I have to say, from the words of the various characters who have spoken about One Piece, it doesn't seem like that the One Piece is actually guarded by anything or anyone other than its difficult unknown location. For example, Whitebeard says that Blackbeard isn't the one that Roger is waiting for. This seems to suggest that Blackbeard could get to Laugh Tale and could find the One Piece, but he's just not the man that Roger would have wanted. Vegapunk more recently similarly states that the person who finds the One Piece will control the fate of the world. Again, these words suggest that anyone could find and acquire the One Piece. There's no further layer of security like a group of guardians, a group of guardians like the Minx who were actually protecting the world Poneglyph. It doesn't seem like there's anyone to prevent people from acquiring the One Piece until they're proven to be worthy. Seems like anyone could actually go and find it if they know where it is. Which I guess could also make sense. Perhaps whatever was hidden at Laugh Tale is just so powerful that Joy Boy felt like he couldn't trust any of his allies to guard it. You know, maybe it's like a Lord of the Rings scenario where he felt that the temptation of the One Piece would be so great and would affect even its guardians. Or maybe he did actually entrust it to someone. You know, maybe he entrusted it to Emmeth, but then Emmeth just jumped the gun, left his post to attack Marijua 200 years ago. You know, maybe that Haki blast that Joy Boy left with Emmeth was actually in preparation for a time that Emmeth may have to use it again against a group of people who found Laugh Tale, a group of unworthy people whom Joy Boy wouldn't have wanted to find the One Piece. Although I think that's less likely. I don't think Emmett would have just discarded an order to guard the One Piece. That's a pretty serious responsibility to just shirk off, but I also think I'm getting a bit carried away. What I just mean to say is that I think it's curious that Joy Boy wouldn't want to ensure better protection of the One Piece as he obviously did with the Poneglyphs. And I guess one of the only answers to that would be that maybe he didn't feel like he had to because he could guarantee the location of Laugh Tail was protection enough. Which actually leads me to think that maybe I've been looking at this the wrong way this entire time. For example, maybe Joy Boy actually specifically chose a location that would sink. Maybe he thought that an underwater island, an underwater location would be a better hiding spot for the One Piece and that would actually 
actually keep the One Piece safe from the hands of the world government. Although in response to that, I would have to say it didn't quite seem like the Roger Pirates were underwater in chapter 967. If you look at the art style during the Fishman Island arc, it's pretty obvious that those scenes are set underwater. There are swirls and waves that have been intentionally drawn to point out that this is all taking place underneath the sea. And to be fair, not all panels include these waves or these swirls, but on the whole, I do think that Oda was making it pretty obvious that this is an underwater island. Contrast this to chapter 967, there's no suggestion that any of this is taking place in a, any location that is quite peculiar. Peculiar like as if underwater. And look, this isn't definitive because Oda didn't really draw any detail. There's barely any detail about the surroundings at all in these panels, and I'm sure that was very deliberate to keep Laugh Tale mysterious. But it does have me thinking of an alternative location. Because where's another location that would be safe from the water levels rising, and also wouldn't be too easy for the world government to locate. You can let me know what you think matches that criteria, but for me, I'm going to have to say a Sky Island. Sky Islands may just be the most logical answer to the question of where is Laugh Tale located. Sky Islands are difficult to get to, meaning that it would be a great hiding spot. Based on what we've seen, it seems like in general they are unaffiliated with the world government, whereas it's been practically confirmed that the Shandorians, they were an ally of Joy Boy. Boy, hence they protected the Polnoglyph, meaning that potentially many of the original Sky Islands were affiliated with the Ancient Kingdom. And if Laugh Tale was a Sky Island, then Oda could probably more easily avoid the problem of explicitly drawing something about its location as opposed to having to draw something underwater but hiding it. Because if you look back at chapter 967, I'd have to say that there is also no clouds to suggest that this is a Sky Island, similar to how there were no waves to suggest that this was taking place underwater because again I think Oda wants to keep the background keep the surroundings pretty vague he wants to keep Laugh Tale pretty inconspicuous but it's much easier to hide clouds and it's much more explainable than just blatantly ignoring the fact that this doesn't seem like it's taking place underwater. So I have to say, the more that I'm thinking about it, I'm loving this idea that Laugh Tale may be located in the sky. And this is actually something I've discussed in the past. I've mentioned in another video that One Piece seems to be very heavily inspired by a Studio Ghibli film. The film's called La Puta, Castle in the Sky. I highly recommend you to go watch that video and I highly recommend you to watch that film because it's honestly quite uncanny the amount of details that match between the film and One Piece. But for the purposes of this video, one of the major takeaways was that Laputa in the film, that island exists in the sky. And I did propose in that video that that may be where Laugh Tale is located as well. And now that's seeming more and more likely, especially even more with these recent developments. For example, if we keep adding to this, sea clouds and island clouds, they've been getting increasing focus from Oda in the Egghead Island arc. I actually made a whole video discussing the importance of these clouds, so you should go watch that video as well. But it makes sense for Oda to have paid more attention to these special clouds if we're going to be spending more time in the sky. You could even make connections to characters like Uroj. He's the only one of the supernovas that we have yet to see focus on in the series. We know that he comes from an yet unidentified Sky Island, maybe his story is going to be expanded on in relation to Laugh Tale. Or even mysterious locations like the Boulogne Terminal. It's one of the very few Sky Islands that we do know something about, even if it is only a little information. But we know that it's an island that exists in the sky because it's propped up by hundreds and thousands of helium balloons. And we don't know much else apart from the fact that it looks like there's a ruined city. And call me crazy, but now I'm thinking that maybe the reason why Balon Terminal is a ruined city is because the world government attacked it and the world government did so while looking for the One Piece under a similar understanding that the One Piece may have been hidden in one of the Sky Islands. Although that would mean that the Balon Terminal has existed for over 700 years which is kind of crazy but not impossible. You know what I have always wondered about though? How do the balloons find their way to just this one specific location? 
how do they all just gather up there? Is there some sort of technology or science behind why all the helium balloons are attracted to this one location? Has that been explained in the series? I don't think it has. Correct me if I'm wrong, that hasn't been explained in the series. You know what would be really fun to think about? And please, indulge me for just a moment. But it would be really fun, it would be really cool if Joy Boy actually created Balloon Terminal. Imagine if he planted a device that would attract helium balloons just to this one location so that it could remain in the sky. And imagine if he created this location as a decoy. Imagine if he wanted the world government to think that this is where the One Piece was hidden, hence why the world government attacked the island, hence why there's a ruined city. Whereas in reality, Joy Boy hit the One Piece on another sky island. I've also wondered in the past whether the One Piece could be located on the moon. Probably unlikely because I don't know how they could devise a way for the four points of the road poneglyphs to point to the moon because the moon is constantly moving and shifting. But then again, maybe there is some sort of ancient technology, advanced technology to something that's able to point to the moon at any given time. Because if so, then that would probably be the most ultimate way to secure the One Piece. But I do have to admit that it is a little left field. Whereas the sky, that's seeming like it's making the most sense to me now. I started this discussion thinking that we were going to come to the conclusion that Love Tale is located deep underwater. And look, we can't rule that out yet. But I'm also loving the fact that we have come back to this idea that Love Tale is actually in the sky. Well, at the very least, now I get to tell you to go watch that Laputa video. You really won't regret it. But as for this discussion, thank you as always for listening to some of my crazy rambles. Blings. Let me know what you think about the location of Laugh Tale. Let me know if you have any ideas on where the One Piece could be located. I'd love to read your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's discussion, please like the video, share it. Please do subscribe. It is September and I would love to get to 100k subscribers. You can also support the channel further by becoming a Patreon or channel member. And thank you to these lovely people who are in fact Patreon or channel members. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.